There's a lot of nostalgia tied with 35 mil film and I think it's just a combination of the colors and the softness with the imperfections. It all just helps add an emotional connection with a photograph. And obviously the best way to get that look is by shooting on 35 mil film, but I find shooting on digital to be more fun and it's just more convenient for me in the way that I shoot. But I still want my digital shots to carry some of that nostalgia and emotion with it. So I try my best to edit it in and I'm gonna show you the basics of how I do that. So the first thing I always like to do is make sure my exposure is where I want it to be. And I'm probably just going to lift it up a little bit here. And I'll probably mess around with this some more later, but for now that's fine. And we're going to go into the curve and I'm going to make what's called an S curve. Some people know it as a film curve, but I like to be very gentle with this because I like to make more of my contrast adjustments with the actual sliders. But what is important here is that you bring up the darkest parts of your image. So you're gonna bring this up and you'll see this fade that we're kind of getting. And it doesn't look very nice right now, but you'll see once everything starts coming together what it's actually doing for the photo. Film has really nice highlight roll off and the way I try and mimic that is usually by bringing up the highlights and then lowering the whites. So that way the highlights are bright, but there's still detail remaining there. Um, next, I'm just going to bring up some shadow detail, not too much though. And then rather than adding in contrast with the contrast slider, I'm going to use the blacks to add in some contrast. Next we're going to go into effects and the dehaze tool acts similarly to as if you're using a diffusion filter or a vintage lens and it just helps get rid of some of that clinical sharpness that comes with shooting on digital. And clarity, I'm usually only staying at either plus five or negative five, depending on whether I want a little bit of a punch or even more softness into my image. For now, I'm gonna add a little bit of a punch, um, but just don't go overboard with this because you can usually tell when you're using a clarity slider. Um, next, we're gonna add in a vignette. And this is super important. This helps add in some imperfection into your photograph. And then to tie the texture all together, we're going to add in grain. You can play around with the settings. I'm kind of just eyeballing it right now, but feel free to just mess around with and see what you like. But what I do want to show you is you see this really nice texture that we're getting with our blacks and our shadows. And that's why this fade that we did is super important. If we hadn't done that, we're losing out on all of that texture. So this is probably one of the most important aspects of the film look for me. Now I'm going to show you how to get a look out of your photo with only using the color temperature and film is balanced at either daylight or tungsten and I really like the cooler tone so I'm going to click on the tungsten and this is a little bit too drastic but I'm going to lower this then I'm going to introduce some green. I'm actually going to drop the vibrance a little bit just so I can push these colors a little bit more. And I'm going to leave it somewhere around there. And it has this really cool look to it that I really like. Okay, we're going to do another photo, but rather than doing the exact same thing all over again, I'm going to go ahead and copy the settings we did here, minus the exposure and the color because that's going to change from photo to photo and I'm going to paste that into here. So we already have a solid base and I'm just going to fix the exposure. 
Okay, I'm gonna go into my color and rather than choosing tungsten, I'm actually gonna choose uh, daylight setting. And I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. And drop the vibrance again. And I'm gonna push this a little bit warmer. Just a little bit towards the green. But what I really wanna show you in this photo is so film has really rich and dense colors and a way you can sort of mimic that in Lightroom is by going into the color mix and going into the desired color and you're gonna drop the luminance value of it. And then you can add some saturation. And red usually takes on a reddish orange kind of look so I'm gonna push it a little bit more orange. Then I'm gonna go into the orange color and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna drop the luminance and you see you really see what that's doing. So I'm gonna probably leave it there and I'm gonna push it a little bit more towards red. Now I'm gonna go into my green and do the exact same thing but rather than saturate it, I'm gonna desaturate it. And then I'm gonna push the color towards the right over here. And I really like how that looks. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a color into the shadows and usually the only two colors I'd be introducing is either green or red. For this photo I think I'm gonna put some red into my shadows and that's basically it for this photo. This is a photo that my subscriber Jalen sent in to me so we're gonna do the exact same thing, paste the settings fix the exposure. I'm actually gonna bring up some of the blacks a little bit, go into the color. Again, choose, you can choose a uh, white balance preset. I'm gonna choose tungsten, drop the vibrance, introduce some green, and then warm it up a little bit. And again, I'm gonna bring in some red into the shadows, just a little bit though. And just like that, we got a really cool look. Okay, we're gonna do one more photo. So I'm just gonna paste it. And what I wanna show you with this one, after I just put everything where I want it to be, um, I'm gonna show you the halation method that I used. So you can go into selective edits. I like to use the radio tool, but you can also use the brush tool and you're going to make an oval around your light source. You're going to bring up the exposure. You're going to go into color, saturate it, choose a red color, and then you're going to add in more of a punch using this temperature slider. And then you can dial in a reddish orange with this slider. Then you can make adjustments to your exposure. And I'm going to leave it somewhere around there. Actually bring it down and then I'm gonna hold it and duplicate it and I'm gonna tell you right now this is not the best way to do this um, because I'm so stubborn about editing on my iPad this is pretty much the way I found to do it um, but you can get more accurate if you use a program like Photoshop lastly I want to touch on camera profiles and if you're using a Fujifilm camera you have access to all of these film simulations and you can 100% use these as a base of your look but um, using just the standard Adobe profile just so you can see that you don't need to own a Fujifilm camera to get this film look. Hopefully that was somewhat insightful and you're able to incorporate some of that into your own edits. But for those who want my full editing workflow, I do have a preset pack alongside a free preset for you to download. The preset pack includes 12 different film looks. 10 of those are color and two are black and white. And they're based off of different film stocks and motion picture film. You also get presets that I use for color grading, uh, the grain and vignette settings. I originally started making these presets when I wanted to focus on portraits, so these presets aren't limited to any specific type of photography. I've made sure that they work in various applications, and they will also work on any camera or file type. If any of you do decide to purchase this preset pack, I 
right off the bat just want to say thank you. It's probably the best way for you to directly support me as of right now. But I understand everyone's situation is different and that's why I gave you the free preset and the tools to go ahead and create your own look. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end. I know a lot of you are waiting on a color grading tutorial so I'll try and get that out ASAP in the coming weeks. But for now just thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.